Hi, welcome back to our channel. My name is Jolie and today's reading is February 6th. And I'm really grateful that you're here with me. And that's it. We're going to be reading in the new series. This is our newest series book, A Little Time for Myself. Oh, isn't it nice to be able to just say that? Keep taking a little time for myself such a such a good job to do that right anyhow well here we go let's get started um actually let's stop for a moment and um settle in and have uh, a nice deep breath in and out so we can be present together and um, say the serenity prayer okay you all set thank you Rachel. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things we can't change, to have the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Okay. What can't we change? I can change anything once I put my mind to it. <laughs> can't change other people's actions. We know that for sure. We can't change other people's perceptions. Tried that. Have you ever tried to do that? They would just see the way I saw and they would understand. If they would just feel what they did to me, then they would stop. I always thought there was some dramatic edge dramatic wedge or angle for me to be able to get someone to get it. And I failed every single time. And, you know, like, I felt like I was running my head up against a brick wall. I felt like I was in, like, a crazy wheel, like a groundhog day of crazy. And I lived that way for so long. And they call that distorted thinking, right? Because if you lived uh, your life with any alcoholism or addiction, like from a parent or from a spouse, or, you know, maybe you thought it was normal to be a teenager and uh, drinking and going out to bars and things like that, where um, you do that all the time. And then uh, for me, what I did, I did that. And I, I kept switching my squashing feeling method, aka stinking thinking and isms, my ism thinking, uh, because I couldn't I couldn't figure out how to do it. So I kept thinking, okay, well, I'll do it. I'll go this way. I'll go that way. I'll, I'll, I'll get married. I'll, I'll do this. I'll do that. Maybe they'll be you know, like running, like going so quick and fig, trying to figure it out. And like 50 years later, I found that I was stuck in just being stuck in the same spot, like still feeling the same feelings that I did when I was a teenager. Yes, I have two nails still painted. <laughs> I like to chip my nail polish. So yeah, I end up moving from one um, addiction issue to another throughout my life and still trying to get people that I attached myself to, loved, felt connected to, to see my point of view, especially when it affected me, the, their actions, but it never worked. Even like the ultimatums and the divorces and the courts and any of that, none, none of it got me the satisfaction of them saying, oh my gosh, 
you made me realize that I was wrong all along. And I promise, not just promise, but right now, like I am a new person. I am going to learn about myself and change and them actually doing it. I've had the I'm sorry's. I'll change. Talk, talk. But none of the, the action. But even with um, the action, sometimes, you know, they would change back. So um, how about me? All I can change is me with the serenity prayer. Do I have the courage to change me? Because that's all I can change. So how about I change for the better? How about I do the work just for today? How about I surrender to the loss to gain serenity? How about I stop catastrophizing so that it'll keep me at a distance from my um, creator? How about I stop instigating my chaos? How about I stop worrying little by little? You know, doesn't nothing miraculously goes away. We're human here. But if I, if I can do me, I can work on changing my perception. I can work on daily working on that if I have the tools and support. So Al-Anon and AA and all these 12 step programs supplied that for me, but only when I got to the point where I had, I was desperate because I knew I couldn't get away from myself. And I didn't know that I was gonna be able to find a place. I mean, I would suggest it to people to go to Al-Anon to start. And I was like very resistant to it because I thought, I don't, I tried everything, but you know, I wasn't willing until I was willing. So the willingness is a humility that I'm so grateful for because to me, that's a new ground for my life to live. So anyway, blah, blah, blah. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and read. Maybe something is related to that, maybe not. It's sometimes, I find it funny that a lot of times it is. I guess it's a perception, right? So um, I wish there was a little more light. So can you, is that better? Maybe that's a little better. Okay, here we go. One of my, okay, February 6th, I didn't already say that, here we go. When I was asked to chair an Al-Anon adult children conference in my region, I actually cried. What did I know about chairing a convention? I didn't feel worthy of such an important service position. I could think of a million reasons why I shouldn't do it. I was new to the program. I didn't have enough experience. I was too young. I didn't think anyone could possibly learn anything from me. I asked my higher power for guidance in making the best decision for myself. Maybe if someone else thought I could do it, and maybe, just maybe, I should make an attempt. When I said yes, I realized that my higher power believed in me more than I believed in myself. Through this service position, I finally began to see myself as my higher power always saw me. Strong, compassionate, a leader. So today's reminder, <laughs> today's reminder, okay, I, I don't always have to say yes to do service, but when I do, I know my higher power and other members have got my back.
So that's wonderful. And then there's a quote from Discovering Choices, Recovering in Relationships. I have a few readings of that book on this channel, as well as other ones. So just check those out um, in the description. There's every day of the year is covered with readings like Courage to Change, Hope for Today, One Day at a Time in Al-Anon. Uh, we do steps on this channel. We have a 12-step um, a meeting that we read uh, on the first Sunday of the month at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So in uh, my email, just send me an email if you want to join. It's kind of cool. Just a few of us and we read and share our experience, strength, and hope. And it's just an hour long and it's um, quite beautiful. All right, so the quote. It is good to know service is recovery. All right. And um, I just want to say, wow, because I just got done reading a comment from one of uh, the viewers. Um, so thank you. Um, there, there, it was on one of the readings, uh, I think it was like a November reading of Courage to Change. And uh, they expressed that they we're going to have a service position. They're going to chair, I think, chair a meeting or share at a meeting. Yes. On Friday. So, um, yeah. I think it's cool because it's very related in the, in the universe. Okay. So here we go. It's, it's, it's good when someone asks you to share, to, to, to say yes, even if you are afraid to or cringe by it or like, ah, I don't want to talk about it. I just want to listen. I don't want to have to tell my story, but um, it's not always about you. It's about what we can do to help others too. By just sharing and being honest, it helps us too. By helping others, we're helping ourselves. By helping others, by helping ourselves. So that's how, in my experience, it works. So um, here we go. Question of the day. Also will be in the description so you can ponder it. it says, what have I discovered about myself from service, from this recovery service? What have I learned? What have I learned about myself from doing service? Maybe you never thought about that. It's good to think about that. For me, it is. I'm like, what did I learn? I learned that being humble is um, part of it, and to get away, get a, get away from myself and my my ego and perfectionism. So. Anyhow, I love you guys, and I will see you, God willing, tomorrow with another reading. And that's it. All right. Okay.